Hi, it's Wendy Friesen. As a hypnotherapist, I have seen a lot of amazing and miraculous health um, recoveries that people have had, as most hypnotherapists have seen. And I think that probably one of the reasons that it's so amazing is that people have tried everything. They've tried every medication, every drug, procedures. They've been poked and prodded, prodded, prodded. That's the part that we all like for years and years. And they still haven't gotten better. And sometimes for things like depression or addiction or headaches or things like that, People do get better very quickly with hypnotherapy. And, um, you know, the thing that really interests me is when I read all these things from the pharmaceutical companies, news releases, or that they're getting fined for this or that, or new products that are coming out, I find that I kind of, you know, I weigh it against what could happen if someone tried hypnotherapy um, to achieve the same result without all those side effects. So one of the newest things is that there's these super pills that they're making that are intended to curb addiction by blocking the brain's pleasure centers. So what they do is if you want to stop smoking or stop, you know, meth or drinking, they're trying to give you a drug that stops your pleasure centers so the drug doesn't reach that. So if you're stopping smoking, um, the drug they found, the Shantix that they're using now, it actually blocks too much pleasure and it creates depression and suicide risk. And it is unfortunate. And the experts are saying that the door is closing on this approach to curbing addiction. And that's actually probably a good thing because playing with the pleasure centers in the brain and creating an actual risk of depression or even suicide, as you may have read in the news, there's a guy in England that stabbed himself to death. All he wanted to do was stop smoking. He took Shantix and stabbed himself to death. And there's a lot of suicide risk that there is now coming out about this drug. It's just amazing to me that we have a tool that works really well that you can use hypnosis with just a few sessions to stop smoking. It's cheaper, there's no side effects, you feel great. And even more important, you make a very deep commitment about being a non-smoker for life, as with other addictions as well. There's so many people who are using hypnosis now to overcome addictions because it not only removes your desire for the addictive substance by changing the way that your brain processes the triggers and the underlying core causes, but it gives you this commitment that is absolutely unwavering in becoming strong and absolutely certain that you're going to live a drug-free or alcohol-free life. Now, another thing that's, um, that they're doing right now is they're putting these probes, and again, we love the probing, probes into your brain that are going to live, deliver electrical jolts deep into your brain, and this is to fight depression. Well, <laughs> the thought of having that done is a little depressing, but that is a new thing that you probably saw in the news. They're actually going to implant electrodes, and they're going to emit impulses of electrical stimulation into your brain. <sighs> What they say that they're doing is they're regulating the abnormal signals to the brain that are causing the depression. Ah, they're regulating the abnormal signals. Well, hypnosis is very effective for depression in a lot of cases because it changes the signals and it changes the triggers and it changes the very core causes, even the chemical makeup of the traumatic or negative memories that were contributing to the depression. It changes the way those chemicals are secreted into your body. So there isn't a difference between a chemical depression and a psychological depression. It is a result of negative emotional memories and responses that create chemicals that flood into your body that does create the depression. So we can stick electrodes in your brain Brain, stimulate them and you might feel better or you might have like a headache or you can use something that is natural that doesn't have side effects and is very proven to work so antidepressants this is very interesting recently the pharmaceutical companies have been looked at because they hid their research that showed that antidepressants are not effective so they hid that research and they only showed the research that showed some kind of improvement in antidepressant therapy. So now they know that antidepressants don't work, that they're no better than placebo. And they also showed that they had hidden the research that proved they didn't work. Oh, this is so sad. I just, it's, it's hard to imagine. But of course, you know it's true because there's money behind it, but it's hard to imagine that, you know, we're playing with human lives and with mental health and with well-being in order to make that happen. Anyway. Purdue Pharmaceutical recently was fined $634 million, which is not a lot to them, a lot to me if I had it, but not a lot to them. They were sued and fined 
because they claimed the OxyContin was not addictive and it was not subject to the abuse that most other prescription painkillers would be subject to. So it did not create dependency and it's not addictive. They were sued because it actually is probably one of the most addictive substances there is. It is heroin. It is an opiate and an opiate changes your brain in such a way that it is actually very, very difficult to get off of. And you have to increase the dosage in order to keep your body operating normally. And the withdrawals are the same as that as a heroin addict coming off of his heroin because it is an opiate. Can you believe it? They, they actually said it's not addictive and marketed it to doctors saying this is not, this is not, not addictive. It doesn't have any withdrawal sim symptoms. So anyway, Purdue was fined and um, they were advertising that it had little addictive potential and whatever. It's just, and it's amazing. They even, one of the Purdue executives, he got the Department of Justice official to instruct the prosecutor to slow down on the Purdue case so that they wouldn't get um, this information exposed. It's just, it's quite amazing. So you can stop smoking with hypnosis sessions. You can go see someone in person or you can listen to CDs. You can end your depression by finding the core causes, changing the traumatic or negative memories in your brain that are flooding you with the chemicals of depression and you can feel better really fast. You can stop drinking in a way that no 12 step program could ever do for you. You can, you can create a life and create the pathways in your brain to what you do want, to living the life you want. Like one of my um, customers who had bought the Alcohol Freedom Program a couple of years ago, he recently wrote to me and he, he said that he's like, I think he's about 50 years old. He has failed at every possible rehab and every method of quitting drinking and he's just thrown his life away. So he feels like nothing would work. But he used my program on CDs and now he's a triathlete, an Ironman triathlete. He swims, runs and bikes and you do like marathons and stuff. Because what I did with the CDs is I helped him build a life that he actually wants to live and that he would really love. And that's what's missing in most addiction programs. That's why rehab centers aren't going to tell you that they have a success rate that is way below 10%. It's because even if they help in getting you off drugs or alcohol, there's no life that is built to replace it. So you're left in the void. And I hear this from so many people who are in recovery that they're in a void, that there's nothing else left for them to, to do. Where do I go from here? I'm, I'm not doing drugs. And, you know, maybe you're taking some of the addiction drugs and now your pleasure centers are blocked. And so you can't even feel happy anyway. And there's nothing that uh, makes your life good. So anyway, uh, glad you could spend this very depressing few minutes with me. <laughs> oh, I'll bring back uh, the Friday funnies and see if I can lighten us up a little this week. But yeah, it is, it is really sad and it's depressing and it's scary that these pharmaceutical companies who own the airwaves as well, they're the ones that are paying for all the advertising on TV and then the, the TV news isn't going to expose the truths and uh, these things properly. So you got to dig really deep. I'll do my best to keep you informed. For right now, if you want to look at something that is, is a possible solution, you know, certainly see your doctor. There's a lot of things, good things that doctors can do for you but also consider doing something that really does affect you at that core level that looks at the causes and and helps approach the triggers the negative memories and associations and helps you get past it well i'm wendy Friesen. and i'm so glad you're here and i will see you next time